My name is Mark Berry. In this demonstration, we're going to look at how to build a user control for WPF. Let's begin by creating a new project. It'll be a C-sharp Windows WPF application. And I'm going to call it User Control Demo. I don't want to use User Control. I made that mistake before, because we're going to be using a namespace user control, and if we had a class named user control and imported that namespace, it would be confused. You need to use an alias or something. Okay, so that's why we're calling it user control demo. And here we are, user control demo. You can see here we've got a grid and a window, and what we want to do is just add a user control here directly to this project. I'm going to go right-click in the Solution Explorer, our user control demo project, add new item, and I'll pick a WPF component and a user control. This user control I'm going to call timer. I could put this in its own separate assembly in a separate project, but for now we'll keep it here, keep it simple. All right. Now, I'm going to adjust the size of this, just so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, I'll make this something like 30 high, and, I don't know, 120 wide. All right, now, it's got a grid by default here. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that and put in a stack panel. You can use any uh, components you would like here. You'll notice that this is just a user control here. It's not what you might expect. It's not a page or uh, a window that you may have seen before when you were doing, doing WPF. So we've got our own user control here. And uh, for this uh, stack panel, uh, I'm going to change its orientation so that it moves uh, left to right. Go horizontal. Okay. And now we want to add something to the stack panel. We're going to add three things. We're going to add a text box, text block rather, text block with a margin just to be able to see a little bit better. Okay. And we're going to give it a name. I'm going to call this elapsed time. And I think I'll set a minimum width, just to make sure I can see it. And I'm going to put a value of 0 in there to start. Now the other thing that I want is a couple of button controls. There we go, two buttons. Now, uh, our two buttons are going to be a start button and a stop button. So, start timer, and the other one will be a stop timer. Great, so we've got two buttons on here. Now, what we're doing is we're creating sort of a composite control for this. Uh, looks like that's not quite wide enough. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room there. There we go. Um, we're creating composite control. Uh, you can also uh, add properties. This is a full class here, this user control. So you can also add properties and methods and things to this as well uh, to access from the outside world. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to add in uh, an event for this button. So I'm going to go over my properties window, make sure that events is selected, and I'll call this start timer. And that's going to take me back to my code. Here's my start timer code. I also want to do that with stop timer. So I have the click event here for stop timer. All right. And if I was on that button, I could double click on stop timer again over in my properties window, and it'll take me to that method. All right, so I've got a start timer and a stop timer method. Now, the other thing I want is I want some uh, uh, backing property to keep my uh, integer in that is the number of seconds. Uh, I could also put this actually directly into the text box and use that as my uh, backing field. Uh, 
then I would need to change it back and forth from uh, a string. Uh, so I think instead I'll just go ahead and create a private field. Uh, it's going to be an integer called seconds to store how many seconds have elapsed since I started my timer. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I also want to create a uh, timer itself. Uh, this is a private timer and I'm going to get this from uh, the dispatcher uh, timer class. Uh, looks like that it does not have a reference yet, so I'm going to go in and add that using statement. Make sure we get that. That's in the uh, system.timers namespace. Uh, sorry, system.threading namespace. Uh, T equals new, and then there's our dispatch timer. Okay, so we've got a new timer now. The other thing we'll want to do is we'll want to uh, initialize this timer at startup, so we'll have to say T dot interval and tell it how often we want it to raise its event. This is going to be a new time span and the time span is going to be zero hours, zero minutes, and one second. Alright, so we set up that time interval and there'll be an event that fires tick every time the time interval passes. So t dot tick for the event, and we'll say plus equals, and we'll go ahead and create a new event handler if I hit tab, so I'm going to do that. Hit tab, and tab again, and here you can see that there's our function name, there's the function, and that's associated with the event handler for tick. So, what I want to do is every time a tick goes by, I want to add one second to it. So. seconds and we can set that equal to seconds plus one. You could also do a post increment operator or whatever. Just makes it a little easier to read there. And then I also want to set this value to what's in my text block. But I haven't actually named the text blocks yet text block yet, I don't think. Oh, yes I did. I called it elapsed time, so that's exactly the value I want. So, here we are. Elapsed time gets however many seconds have elapsed. Okay, and the only thing left to do here... Oh, that's a string. The only other thing left to do is when I click the start button... Oh, what's in that light? Uh, ah. I'm trying to set it to the whole thing. I want to set it to the text in the text box. There we go, that's better. The, now the only thing left to do <laughs> is to uh, take our start timer and actually start that uh, dispatch timer. So t dot start when somebody clicks the start button and t dot stop when somebody stops the timer. Alright, so we have a place to keep our integer for how many seconds have passed. We have a timer that will throw up an event called tick every so many seconds if it's started, and if it's stopped, it'll stop adding one and tick will stop being called every time tick gets called. We add one second and we put it into that box. Alright, let's check it out. We'll save that, and I'm going to go over to my window.xaml file. Let's build this so it'll be available to us. Alright, I'm going to leave the grid there. Uh, and I do want to add my new control. Now, to add my control, uh, it's going to have to be able to find it. Well, in order to find it, it will need to know uh, what its namespace is. So let's do XML NS and we'll give it a name, uh, user control one, something like that. That'll be our prefix for this namespace. Equals. Okay. And here you can see we want that uh, user control that's in our current assembly. Right. 
and we well, can see down here. Let's see what is that namespace? What did I call this? I called this user control demo. There we go, user control demo. And now I can go ahead and add one, and this will be user control one. And the thing I want to add is a timer. Okay, so there's our timer property. And you can see when I put that user control one timer on here, I dropped it on the page. Uh, this will actually work now. Let's go ahead and run it just to confirm that. So we could reuse this anywhere. That's one of the reasons to create a user control. And we can also programmatically interact with those properties and methods that we marked as public in that user control class. And here we can see that the timer is actually working. And we can stop it. Wait a few seconds. And start the timer back up. So in this demonstration, we saw how to create a simple timer user control, and we put it into a window and used it.